So what have we got inside? So it's my dad's clock. Yeah. It stopped working in 1985 yeah. um, when my dad passed away. 1985. And it hasn't worked since. Wow. My dad saw the clock at his first cousin's house and just fell in love with it. And he wanted one exactly the same. Oh, bless. And so my cousin went out and bought this clock for him. And what year was that? Around about the 60s. So what do you remember about this clock from your childhood? <laughs> it was the bane of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it like that. What, what do you mean? It just constantly chimed when yeah. you're trying to watch something. It chimed on the hour. OK. So one o'clock, yeah. OK. Two o'clock, two chimes. Right. So by the time it's got to seven o'clock on an evening, all you can hear is this chiming going on. <laughs> right. So we try and stop it from chiming and stop the pendulum until my dad found out. Wow. And we weren't allowed to touch it ever again. <laughs> so if it was the bane of your life, well, why would you want to get it repaired now? Because I need my dad back in my life. All right. Okay. It means a lot to me yeah. um, because this is the only memory I've got of my dad. And I just need something to hold on to. Yeah. And it's the clock. Yeah. How old were you when your dad passed? I was eight years old. Oh. He had a heart attack. Just out the blue. He was 48 when he died. Mm. He was an absolutely wonderful bloke. So what will it mean to you if I can get it striking again? <sighs> well, I'll just know my dad's there. And uh, that's all that matters. Right. I've got to get it done. Thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. You take care now. Yeah. This clock is, is a 30-day a clock, which means you wind it up once a month. Wow. So you've got this, um, this one pivot hole with probably about almost half a millimetre of wear, which in clock terms is huge. If that's worn, then, then the wheels don't mesh properly. Instead of nicely sort of meeting like that, they actually start hitting on the top like that and, and causing a lot of friction. So what I need to do is reduce the size of, of the pivot hole. Um, and to do that, I need to use a bush, um, which is one of these little things. Before I pop that into the plates, I need to just open up the, the hole in the centre there, big enough for the pivot just to slide in nice and snugly. I'm just going to open up the hole using a brooch, which is a five-sided tapered cutting tool. And as I spin the lathe, just gently push it in and it opens up the hole nice and evenly. I'm now going to use a, a different sort of cutting tool and this is a, a reamer, which again is, is tapered, but will open up the hole just the right size for the bush to go in. These sort of tools have been used for hundreds of years, the, the, the hole that it opens up is slightly smaller than the bush. So when you push the bush in, it holds it so tight that it, it won't come out. And when I push it in, it'll be really friction tight. I'm just going to make sure that it spins nicely. Good, that's nice and smooth. Just got another probably 12 to do. Um, and then I can get the clock back together and uh, get it ticking. 